what is going on everybody we are back for another edition of that the personal just buffalo tonight we got a, we got a couple of things on uh we got a couple of things on deck for you tonight we're gonna talk about obviously mac bean as my guy uh the fight the famous mighty Oba pat freeman likes to call him sean mcdermott and brandon bean were given a contract extension through two years um two extra years at which is a through 20 through the year 2027 Yep. We're going to break down what that means from a job security standpoint, from just overall organizational standpoint. I know there's a lot of questions about, hey, what's this a, uh, what's this a, uh, a message to Stefan Diggs? You know, there's a lot of questions about this extension. Um, a lot of different things about it. We're going to talk about Leonard Floyd tonight. I know we have not been talking about him yet. We're going to talk about what his impact is on this roster, on this defense. We also want to talk about what his impact will be with for the fellow defense ends. There's going to be somebody on the roster bubble with him being there, especially with Von Miller. So there's a couple of things that we're we going to really dig into tonight. We got a good show for you. And we got a little segment called McDermott Fair or Foul. You know, a lot, a lot, a lot of weird press coming his way. A lot of pressure being added on him. We're going we gonna to answer the question if we feel fair or foul. It's got my co-host with me to build on me. James Malley, what's going on? Man, what's good, JT, man? You know how we do. Man, I know you ready to talk that talk. So, you know, I'm ready, man. So, right. miss the people, man. We, you know, going every other week, you know, miss the people a little bit. But we about to, we, we got some things for y'all tonight, man. Y'all don't want to miss this. Yeah, and we'll talk about it when we come right back. And don't forget, this is brought to you by Checkers. Be right back. <music> Guys, uh, our dynamic duo here in Buffalo, Sean McDermott, head coach Sean McDermott, and general manager Brandon Bean, Inc. through 2027. You know, it was very strange when it came down. Um, it's, it almost felt like for a lot of people, it was a surprise on Sean McDermott's end to get an extension. Because, like, it's a lot of flat coming his way right now. And not much of a surprise for Brandon Bean. But I think people forget that in business today in the NFL, you come in, you go as a head coach and GM combo most times. The, it, it seems like the years of the head coach being fired and the GM staying for another year to see if he can turn around with a new head coach, it seems like those days are, are, are beyond us. And honestly, I think those days have been extended or this process has been extended to multiple teams across the league is because of Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean's success here in Buffalo. Yep. So what did you think uh, when the 49th century first came down? I mean, obviously, was it a surprise? Was it, you know, what would you think of it? <clears throat> I was happy, uh, me personally. Mm -hmm. uh, I like what they've done, right? I know a lot of people get caught up in, well, they haven't won a Super Bowl. They haven't won a Super Bowl, right? I like, we have a, we have a vision. They have a vision, right? And they're sticking to that vision. Mm -hmm. They don't want to just throw everything in and win now and then you trash for four years and to try to get back to where you are, where we are now. Right. Mm -hmm. I think the way they set things up, we're going to consistently be a contending team. Right. Contender to me means as long as you get in the playoffs, you're a contender. Right. You win three games, you get in the wild card, you win three games, it's, it's on. Right. And, and you can get hot at the right time. I hate when people are like, oh, it's only two or three contenders. No, if you're in the playoffs, you are a contender. Right. 
Because if you out there and you battling, you know, for that, you're in that tournament at the end, you're a contender. And uh, and long as they continue to put a product on the field that's a cont- that's a contender, I-, I love what they're doing. You know, we got our franchise quarterback and Josh, obviously. Um, the defense, you know, whatever you talk about, them boys ball. They're one of the top defenses in the NFL. Whatever you say about them, at the end of the day, they're one of the best units in the NFL, right? Um, they went out and got the Stephon Diggs. You know, uh, they went out, they got, they found Dawson Knox in the third round. Now you got Kincaid, so you possibly got two weapons at the tight end position. And then and we have an identity as an organization. When is the last time we've had the identity as an organization, JT? It's been a long time, brother. It's been a long time, yeah. You know, so that, you don't play around with that because, you know, oh, they didn't win the Super Bowl yet. No, you don't play around with that. If you know you're knocking on the door with these guys, you get these guys at security, you let them do their job, and we'll get there. Um, and I don't really want to win one Super Bowl. I want to win multiple. So put us in a position to win multiple. Um, and I think they're, they're doing that. So I was excited about the deal, uh, happy that they'll be here at least through 2027. Uh, and you know if they win a Super Bowl, they'll get another extension at the end of this year. So uh, – they not going nowhere, man. And these dudes, they would be the hottest thing on the market if they did hit if they did hit the market. So they would probably break records for the deals that they would get. So uh, I'm yeah. very excited. I mean, I think too. Who? I guess let me ask you this question: Why? Why you just said that? Because that's actually brings me to an interesting point. If both of these guys, and I'm not saying for any rich reason that this is going to happen, I'm not. I'm just asking. If either one of these guys were openly available in the market, which one do you think would be more coveted, Brandon Bean or Sean McDermott? Just, just curious. That's a good question. I honestly think somebody will bring them in together. You think, I think, think a team like the New Orleans Saints will go get them both and bring them in together. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that uh, Brandon – I think Brandon Bean would be a little bit more coveted on the market if, if he became available just because he's a team builder, right? Um, I think that he actually may be looking at a position a little bit higher than what he has with Buffalo. If he hit the market, I think he'd be looking at more of a team president plus general manager position. Um, I don't I don't know if many people realize right now that Sean McDermott, and I've said this multiple times on the show, that Sean McDermott is pretty much your acting team president. I don't, I guess I don't know how many people actually realize that, but that's, what he is, he's your head coach, but he's actually your acting team president. Because remember, Kim, Kim on paper, Kim Bagula is. And a few years back, I mean, obviously she's going through health complications right now, but a few years back, she kind of stepped to the side, and Sean McDermott took that over, for the most part. So, um, no, I, I was, I'm, I'm actually happy with the guys getting the deal, but it's not a surprise to me. Um, to me, it just seems like it's business as usual. I know a lot of people were saying that this may be a message or questioning, was this a message to Stefan Diggs? The Bills don't send, need to send a message to no. Stefan Diggs. No. This is not his football team. He's a football player on this team, and he's a damn good football player on this football team. Yep. But this ain't his team. No one questions it. Sean McDermott runs this show. And he will run this show until Terry Pagula or someone says, hey, you are no longer – the head man in charge, <clears throat> you know. So I, I like, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't feel that. I know some media I was putting out there, like, hey, this is a message to Stefan Dick showing who's in charge. Let me ask you a question, JT. What's yeah. the longest tenure Buffalo Bills coach in our franchise history? You know, I know, I know, it got to be Marv Levy, but what? outside of Marv, no, um, period. Marv, I know Marv is the one. How how long was he here? 11, 12 years. Uh. I want to say off the top of my head, I have to look it up. I want to, I want to say I, th- I thought Marv got here on like '87. I'm about to look this up now, um, because whatever whatever that is, Brandon uh, Bean, or excuse me, McDermott will break that. He will be the longest tenure Buffalo Bills coach in history, as deserved, well deserved. Yeah, Marv Levy was from '86 to '97, so that's about that's 11 years. So my, my thing is this, with the extent. Like I said, I two things on it. Didn't think they need to send a message to Stefan Diggs. We know whose team this is, the Sean McDermott team. He runs the show. Um, I don't think anybody's ever questioned it. I, I think do lead to your point from the previous show that 
you you asked uh this, you brought up the point this is the first time that anybody's ever questioned it felt like publicly questioned Sean McDermott or publicly challenged Sean McDermott. Yeah. Now I, I will agree with you with this. If that ever happens again, and it happens again next off season, I don't care who they are, they won't be they will no longer be on this football team. Nope. Okay. Um and FYI, Sean McDermott has the win in his uh, uh, highest win percentage in Buffalo Bills history as a head coach. Yeah. It, it, like these guys are 97 and, uh, I mean, 62 and 35 coming here together. Okay. They won 60, pretty much 64% of their games. They're four and five in the playoffs. They have three AFC championships. Um, I mean, they have AFC East championship titles. Okay. They've been to, I think, what, uh, one um, AFC championship game? And they yep. have two bad, two divisional losses. One game was an epic game, and one game was a horrible performance at, from the last year from Bengals, which obviously a lot of questions of why that happened. I don't think it had anything to do with coaching or X and O's. I think it has a lot to do with other things going on. Okay? I'm glad these guys are here. I think it's business as usual. I think that one thing it does is it avoids a possible distraction down the line. Mm-hmm. You don't. You didn't want to get to the year 2025 and know that Josh Allen's guaranteed money was going to be running out in 2026. You have to extend Greg Rousseau at some point. Von Miller will be departing sometime a little bit before that, possibly. And then be on the hook for, hey, is our head coach and GM signed through this? Because when you get to 2026, that's that's going to probably be your next transition point. When you start thinking about the ages on this team, the contracts on this team, the extensions are going to be running out. The extension that you're gonna to have to be, you're gonna to have to uh, start coming. There will be at that point in time. Think about this. There yep. will be no Micah Hyde. There will be no Jordan Poyer. There will be no Von Miller. There may not be any Deion Dawkins. Trey White. There probably they may not be any Trey White, and they may not probably won't be any Stephon Diggs anymore at that point in time. Like when you really, really. Twenty twenty six. I think he'd definitely be going by now. Yeah. So when you like really when you really really think about this point. That's what you're looking at at 2026. That most of your current core right now for the Super Bowl contending team will not be here. So it's vitally important to have these two guys who have spearheaded this turnaround of this franchise and the organization here. I think that's the bigger picture. Yeah. And I think it's a smart business move. And people don't realize how important this draft Next year's draft, and the next three drafts are extremely important to our future, right? Yeah. You got it. You got to hit on these guys. You need out of each class, each class, you need three dudes in each class. Each class, you need three dudes at least. Um, you got, you got to. You can't afford not to, to have three dudes. No, you got to hit. And I think we saw that this past season, where some of our draft picks didn't work out the way they should have worked out. Or maybe not as fast as they should have worked out, and and you saw when we had when we finally got hit with the injury bugs. Mind you, knock on wood. Hopefully, we can get back to the to the injury history we had before this past season. We didn't have any trouble. We we had most of our guys healthy for at least a stretch run and fully ready to go. This was the first year that you could say, hey, you know, we had Poyer playing on one leg. You had no Micah High. You had no Von Miller. You know, you had guys banged up, and the guys that we drafted to be their incumbents were not ready. I think that's why you saw some of the changes on the coaching staff, especially the defensive backs coach being being changed. Like they, I thought people said all last year was um he was the scapegoat. I guess I forgot the guy's name. I have to uh, look it up. But it wasn't the scapegoat. It was the fact that none of the players under under Sean, um, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer developed. Yeah. That's the problem. Um, you got to be a developer there, too. You know, I mean, you have to. You got to be <laughs> yeah. a developer. And it's not on Jordan Poirier. It's not on Micah Hyde to develop anybody. That's on the coach. If there's lack of development, that falls on the coach, period. Yeah, so, like I said, end of the day, um, I'm ecstatic for the extension. Like I said, I'm a big fan of these guys. I know that there's a lot of different different things going around about having a defensive mind there, coach. Um, if Brandon Bean has done enough on his roster. But I will say this about specifically Brandon Bean. There's never been a weak point on this roster that 
we were weak at a certain spot the, for the previous season, and he didn't go into the next offseason and attempt to address that spot, that position. Yeah. I'm not, once again, I'm not saying that he's always gotten it right. He addressed it. But he addressed it, and he's always been aggressive at going at spots that he felt was weak on this roster. Okay. Now, even they go out to O line, JT. Look at look at O line. You draft a guy from Florida, right? Yep. You bring in um McGovern from Dallas. Correct. You bring in Miami's tackle, right, to be able to compete. Mm-hmm. You bring in a guy, those are the type of guys that you you can't go get the top guys. Those are the dudes, the workers. Those are the guys that you that can work out on the office line. You can hit on guys like that, especially on the O line. And and I'm very excited about the competition that we have brought in on the office line. Cause them dudes gonna be hungry and they are gonna get after it, you know. Right. So I'm very excited to see what what they gonna do in that O line. Well, well, I mean, like, like you can go through the history of these guys of, of Brandon Bean, right? You said we needed a number one receiver, we needed a dog. You went and traded for Stephon Diggs. Yep. Okay. You still went and drafted a Gabe Davis in the fourth round, but you traded for Stephon Diggs. You say you needed a pass rush. Okay. You know what? We felt we needed a pass rush to beat the Chiefs. We needed a closer. You go sign Von Miller. It came out of left field, surprised everybody. Yeah, even me. Okay. You said you needed more people in the defensive line. We, I mean, like I said, I, I, and we're going to talk about Leonard Floyd a little bit later. I hope that this defensive line is where it needs to be. But I can tell you this. In the in McDermott's and Bean's tenure, we have never had a defensive line that has been this talented right here. Nope. Okay. And like I said, we, but he's, we, we've consistently, Paid for it. When you said, "Hey, we need to get more athletic in the defensive backfield," well, this on paper is probably the most athletic defensive backfield that we've had in their tenure. Dude, it's going to be competition back there. Yeah, yeah. You talking about Danzler came? Up? Oh my goodness! Yeah, Danzler, Benford, Elam. Like I said, all three of those guys are more athletic than what Levi Wallace was, who was an incumbent starter. Yeah. Taylor Rapp is your third safety now. But guess what? DeMar Hamlin had the tragedy last year, and behind DeMar Hamlin, you literally had nobody else as a backup safety. Nobody. So you know what? I'm going to go address it. I'm going to get Taylor Rapp. Taylor Rapp is a starter in this NFL. No question. It's not a backup. He's a starter. So to have that as your third safety, I guess there's never been a point where Brandon Bean has not addressed something. Hey, in the backfield a couple of years ago, they said they said that Devin Singletary and Zach Moss at the time, we they didn't have enough speed, supposedly. Okay. Whether you agree or disagree with that, that that, that that's an idea. I know how you feel about speed. It, 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 it don't always tell the story, especially at running back. But guess what? People said that that was a problem. So what they do? They went and got James Cook. You went and traded for Naeem High. And then in the, in the, the receiving core, you said you didn't have no speed there. So you what you do this year? You sign Sherfield. You go get Hardy. So and and, and, they get busy. Yeah. At the end of the day, they've never left the stone unturned. So I'm like I said, I'm perfectly fine with the extensions. Um, I think they. I don't. I'm not for the proponent they deserve it. Okay, but I'm not for the proponent either that they don't deserve it. I just I I told I said in our chat to me it's just business as usual. You want to keep your guy. You want to keep your guys in house. Keep them in house. I'm okay with it. I'm not gonna bang on the table and say they need the extension now. They deserve it. Okay. They 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 did their thing. Cool. Give it to them. But I'm damn sure not gonna say well, you 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 you, you, you did. They didn't deserve it. You shouldn't have done that. I think I I think that's just right there. I think that's just anger. Um, and that brings me to um, our next topic, which is uh. Show me Dermot. Show me Dermot Farrell. Um, the old ball coach has been getting a lot of flack since the Bengals lost. There's been people like Colin Coward, specifically Nick Wright, a lot of analysts, media outlets questioning his leadership. The biggest thing that you hear now is, can you win the Super Bowl with a defensive-minded head coach? Or you got to go get some young offensive guru coach. Blah blah. blah. Listen, I find it all to be way, way out of out of bounds. 
I don't think it matters if you're head coach's offensive or defensive. It depends what kind of staff he put together and who you got a quarterback at the time. You should you should have put up the top foolery because that's what that is. Straight uh-huh. foolery. Um, for people to talk about even question anything about him, I think it's just straight foolish, period. And I'll let yeah. you talk about it, JT, because I just think it's crazy that you're going to question the man who showed it. His strongest, the strongest, he's the str- he's the strongest leader we've had in recent memory, and that's his biggest strength. Probably is a leader is leadership. Right. That's his biggest strength. You know what I'm saying? The things like certain in game calls and certain things like that, dude. That's that's just part of learning. That's part of growing. Right. That's part of him. He has room for opportunity in certain areas, of course. Right. And he's learning that. While winning, we're learning these things while winning. We lose some of the we we've lost. We haven't won a Super Bowl yet, but at the same time, we're doing all of this, and people are complaining with eleven and eleven and six. What we, we no twelve and five last year. Uh-huh. Totally. People are are complaining about this and this and questioning him with an eleven and five record. All the tragedy that it's it's a miracle, dude. Think about this. Let's start with Dawson Knox's brother passing away. That affected the team, yeah. right? All these, every, all these events that happened, even our snow, crazy snowstorm we had, yeah. dudes had to walk in blizzards. Um, the Demar Hamlin situation, injuries, the most injuries we've had in a long time, and we still was a twelve and five. Yeah. Like most teams would have been like, listen, this is a rough year. Hey, we took a step back. We finish, you know, seven and 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 ten, and we're gonna get a good draft pick. We'd be back on top next year. These dudes finish twelve and five. Come on, man. Come well, thirteen. On. Well, thirteen. Well, thirteen three last week. Last year, I think thirteen three. They finished. No, I think we twelve. Was we twelve and five or thirteen and four? No, it was 13, three. thirteen three last year. Oh yeah, because we didn't. No, no, you're right. Because we that we didn't have that seventeenth game because of the, the, the yeah because of the. Uh, the Miami situation. So I, I, just want, I just want you to, I just want you to uh, listen to this right here, right? So when you go back to the, the coaches fired in 2022, just this past law season, you have five, I think you had six coaches fired. Five of these coaches that were fired were offensive minded guys. Kev Kingsbury, Nathaniel Hackett, Frank Wright, and Matt Rule. Lovey Smith was the only Defensive minded guy that supposed defensive minded guy was fired. So, what does that tell you? That shows you right there. There's no such thing as should you need an offensive minded coach or a defensive minded coach. What you need is a leader. Exactly. But if you are a defensive minded coach, I will agree with this. If you're a defensive minded coach, you do need to have a strong offensive coordinator who can control that entire side of the ball. And you have to have a quarterback. I think the Bills have both. There wasn't much drop off. There wasn't much drop off stat wise or numbers wise for switching from Ken Dorsey to Brian Dable. I think Ken Dorsey, I told you. I, I think he's gonna be well, he know he won't be here long. He he's like, gonna get a head coaching job. Yeah, absolutely. And this is what happens to offensive minded guys. You know what I mean? They they get poked, they get poked. they're the first guys to get poached. The absolute first. So then if you want to go back to 2021 guys being guys being fired. Okay. Uh, Matt Nagy, offensive minded guy, got replaced by Matt Eberlis, another uh, offensive guy minded coach. Mike Zimmer, defensive minded coach, fired by Kevin, o- replaced by Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell is. We'll see what he does in. We'll see what he does in Minnesota. Brian Flores fired. Mike McDaniel in. That story's to be read. There was also Dolphins fans this year that was calling for Mike McDaniel's head after the Tua situation. Joe Judge, and eh, more of an offensive guy, I guess. He's special teams. One of these special teams guys. He was special teams, but yeah. hey, Bill Belichick named him a co-offensive coordinator, did he? So, is that offensive or that defensive? I can't tell you. David Culley, offensive guy fired. So, like I said, you can go on this list. Urban, and uh, let's not uh, forget uh, Urban Meyer, okay? And then Sean and then Doug Peterson a year. You, you must be in a jo- you must be in the mood to joke tonight, JT. You're in the joking mood. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just Urban showing. Meyer. Yeah, but but these guys that I know I named, 
that's like eight coaches in the past two seasons that have been fired. And I say about 65 to 70% of the coaches fired have been offensive minded guys. See, the thing about offensive minded guys is a lot of times, not only are they, not only do they command big money to come to your franchise, but they also, a lot of times, they also lack a lot of control. They're so they're so in tune with play calling and put in in, in in the offense that they lose sight of everything else that's going on with the, a the organization and b all aspects of the game. It's, the game is not just offense. Then they go in the draft and they tend to draft offense, and you tend to neglect the defense. This has been a pattern for years. This is through the history of time. And like I said, I get it. The, it. the NFL game has changed. It's become off, It's become more offensive. But it, when the hell did the Buffalo Bills not evolve with it? We were the number two ranked offense in the league last year with Josh Allen with one elbow in a season that I felt that he did not play his particularly best. No. So no, at no, what no. point in the Bills, because we have a defensive minded coach, did we not evolve offensively along with the league? Our quarterbacks on the Madden cover this year. They don't put quarterbacks or bad offenses on the Madden cover. Just saying. Got to be doing something, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. It, it's, it's just a lot. Uh, it, it's a lot of, I, I think that this is, it's a lot of foulness coming for Sean McDenner's leadership. Now, mind you, do you ever think that there's a that there's a chance that Sean McDermott could ever be fired by the Pagulas if this team continues to falter in the playoffs? No. And, and what timeline do you put on it if they say, "Hey, you know, this ain't working"? Dude, they, I mean, they. I don't think it'd be, it wouldn't be before they end that contract. If anything, that 2027, if it's just not working. They'll be like they'll mutually part ways at that time. Mm. I just don't see them unless he just bomb away. You know, I just, I don't see that happening. I, I don't see it either. Like I said, I agree with you. I don't think they will ever publicly fire him. Um, and I know, like I said, it, it's with this situation. There's a lot of comparison to, or the fear is, Marvin Lewis. Andy Reid with the Philadelphia Eagles that you're going to have an incumbent coach that are here for 10 plus years and they either A, never get you to the big game or B, keep coming up short, um, get you to the big game once you don't win that and continue to come up short in the playoffs. I get it. I understand the fears. I And I agree with it. Um, I think that the NFL has changed. I think coaching in all leagues has changed where it's more of a, what can you do for me right now, Phil? I don't think the Buffalo Bills organization, the Pagulas, are with that type of mentality. I, I, I don't. I, I really don't think they're with the mentality. I think they're more of an old school mentality, loyalty. Um, they work in unison. Yep. The entire organization, they work they in do. unison. So I don't, I don't see it. I... I I don't, and I said I have to agree with you. Twenty twenty seven to be the first year that I say, if this if they ain't got to that point by then, then it's gonna be. If we win the Super Bowl within the next two years, uh -huh. they'll get an extension to twenty thirty. Twenty thirty, yeah, I can agree with that, and that would put them at, that would put them at, at that point thirteen. I'd be thirteen years with the team, I believe. They ain't going nowhere. They ain't going no, to no. So, I don't know. I, I just, I just don't. I don't really get the the. I get. I guess I get the questions on the leadership, but when I look around the league, there's only probably about two or three coaches that I could even say that are head coaches currently that I would be okay with them replacing Sean McDermott. Yeah. I think he fits the culture. Sometimes you get somebody just fit. I think he just right. fit. 
I, I do too. I, I think that's the biggest thing. Like for years, you could get you you couldn't get someone to take this Buffalo job. You couldn't get someone. You couldn't get anybody to take it. For I mean, we wanted people like Mike Shanahan and Kyle Shanahan. Um, I'm trying to think of some other big name coaches that we were going after. I think the last the last time we got a coach, or the last two times that we got a coach that was. The guy that we really, really wanted was Wade Phillips. No, no, no. Because remember, Wade Wade came into this job as he was a DC. But everybody wanted him now. What Wade? Yeah, that, if I remember correctly. Well, well, he he, he took our job from an in in house. He was in-house. yeah. That's what I'm saying. But people wanted him to to get it. Yeah, but he had already been a fail head coach with Denver. Remember. So no, no, I remember here. that. But, I, but, but I'm, I'm saying, I, you saying somebody that we wanted, like every, people wanted Wade to take that job after. Yeah. No, no, people wanted Wade. And obviously, the way it ended didn't help us in future coaching searches, you know, the way Ralph Wilson and company handled that situation. But I, I'm just saying that the last time we really, really wanted a guy that was from the outside was Greg Williams. Because remember when Greg Williams' year, when he, when he was a he was the hottest coordinator in the market to be a head coach. It was two guys that year, Marvin Lewis and Greg Williams. And we actually had our choice at both. And we chose Greg Williams. And after that was probably Mike Malarkey coming from Pittsburgh. Those are only two times that we really got our guy. Now, Sean McDermott, when he, when he was on the market that year, he was not a top guy on that head coaching search in the market. He really wasn't. But he's one of the few that has lasted. Most of those guys that he came in with his coaching class are, are not there anymore. They're not coaching yeah. those teams. So, like I said, I, I think that the pairing with Buffalo was right. Like, I don't think Rex Ryan is a bad football coach. But he's not. he wasn't right for a market in Buffalo. I I love Rex, Rex Ryan, right? But I, don't, if, I think if he would have been better if they gave him the type of power that McDermott got. And if he had I, – I just that's my opinion. Yeah, you, you don't. You think that it see, and that's that brings me back to the point about the extension not working in unison. Yeah. So I don't know. It, it, it's it's interesting, but then again, at the same time, when you look at Rex Ryan's history too, he could he didn't get along with Doug Whaley or whatever that situation was, and, but he also didn't get along with Jeff Isaac when they brought him in New York either. So maybe that was a per, maybe that's a personal thing with Rex that he don't get along with people, and maybe there's a reason that ownerships. Don't they never gave him the power that the Bills have given Sean McDermott? Some True. people don't. Some people don't know what to do with too much power. True. Okay. So, but moving on, man. Um, overall, I think I call foul on the Sean McDermott leadership questions. Yeah. I call foul. You got fair or foul? I'm foul. <laughs> foul. You know that. All right. So that brings us to our next segment. Bills brought in. Uh, pass rusher Leonard Floyd. I know a guy that you're really high on, and I remember you specifically saying multiple times over the last couple of years that the Bills needed that pass rusher, that Jabal Sheard type of Yannick and Gagway specialty pass rusher. And I specifically that. said Leonard Floyd. Yeah, you did. And uh, my guy from Dallas uh, that went to Denver. Um, oh, Randy Gregory. Rand- Randy Gregory. Those yeah, are two names I said. You did. And now you got Leonard Floyd. Yep. So that brings me to the question of what are your expectations for Leonard Floyd this season? How do you think he'd be using his defense pre Von Miller return and post Von Miller return? And then that's going to bring us to our final segment with who's going to be on the bubble with this man on the roster now. My expectations for him, I wouldn't be surprised if he he has 10 sacks. Because what he's going to be so fr- – he's going to be that guy where I said we need it. So, dude, I don't care about you with the run. We got guys that's going to handle that. Do your job, get them. Period. Go get the quarterback. Right? He going to come off the edge. He brings a different element than any other, any other uh, pass rusher we got in the room. He may get 10, 11 sacks. And he's going to be motivated to get paid too. Right, he's gonna be very motivated. Yeah. He's gonna be motivated. So this is gonna be his last time to have the ability to get paid. 
that dude gonna come off the edge like a madman. So I think he'll be that third guy. Um, I don't think me personally, I think Von Miller gonna start the season. I don't think they're gonna put him on pup. I think he's gonna start week one. Um and you know, don't forget there's a partial ACL ACL tear too. Um I think he'll start week one. I think uh Leonard Floyd to come in as that third guy. I think he is gonna cause headaches for people. So that's I have very high expectations for him. I think he's gonna ball out. All right. So in getting Leonard Floyd, right? This is not the third wheel guy that Mario Addison, which we got we signed past his prime. Okay, this is a little bit different. In a normal free agency market where more than 50% of the league was not over the salary cap going into free agency, Leonard Floyd would not be here in Buffalo. No. We were, in my opinion, blessed <laughs> by a very strange and weird free agency market where owners were just not shelling out the dollars Um recklessly as they have in the past and we saw that with not only Leonard Floyd but we saw that with Taylor Rapp and we saw that with Jordan Boyer normally on the market these guys would get overpaid by either a team going through a rebuild or a team going in a mere tier team looking to take that step forward we had money it didn't happen this year that's how we landed Leonard Floyd to be honest with you second of all this is a guy who has had 29 sacks in the last three seasons. I'm going to repeat that. This is a guy who has had 29 sacks in the last three seasons. Okay? Now, last year, he played He say, He played 86% of snaps last year, too. Uh, a guy that's generally been healthy his entire career. You go back to 2019 with the Bears, 16 games played, 16 games started. 2020 with the Rams, 16 games played, 16 games started. 2021 and 2022, 17 games played, 17 games started. Guy that stays on the football field, has been generally healthy, and has consistently gotten to the quarterback. And as I should say, aging like fine wine because his pass rush and moves have gotten better. Once again, this dude who came into NFL, he wasn't forecasted to be a bum. He was a top 10 pick, being picked ninth overall by the Bears. Yep. Took up a couple years to get it going, but... Once again, this is a Von Miller impact. Or Von Miller being in Buffalo impact. Okay? Without Von Miller, without without a terrible free agency market as far as ownership of dollars, Leonard Floyd is not here. Yep. So I, I agree with you. I think he's the third guy. I don't think he's starting opposite of Von. The only way I think... I don't think happens, he want to. No. Why would you? Why would you? When we when Von Miller got here last year, we said two things: stay fresh and play less. Von Miller will probably start out the season playing fifty percent of the snaps, 50 percent of the snaps. Yeah. They'll bring him along. Leonard Floyd, you'll see his numbers. He'll have some pretty uh, decent snap counts. So, I think if he, he I think he's going to drop from eighty six down to route. I think he's because I think he still may hit seventy. It depends on how the season goes. We blowing people out, then you're going to see that number dip to like 60, 65 percent. But first of all, he ain't starting over Greg Rousseau. No. Okay. Let's just get let's just get that right. Let's get that straight right now. There's no way that Leonard Floyd is starting over Greg Rousseau. Okay. And I know there's been some questions out there. Not a chance. Greg Rousseau is a is a freak athlete. Okay. Freak size, and he's coming off a very solid. And promising second year where he had eight and a half sacks and pretty much played the second half of the entire season on a bad ankle. Okay. But I I do think third downs, I think this year you're gonna get if Von Miller's healthy, like I said, I, I'm I'm still I'm still on the fence. I'm not sure if he starts the season week one or the pup list. I think the Bills <laughs> I got this feeling of Shummer, Durham, Brandon Bean. They're doing their best to hold him back. Like, listen, relax. We need you for the player. I think they said it multiple times. But in the day, if Von wants to play, Von ain't going to play. Okay, let's just get that right. But I think they're going to try to hold him back. But if they don't, either way, great. But I think on third down, you get Leonard Floyd on the left, the left or the right. 
You got Von Miller on the other side. You have Greg Rousseau inside, and you have Ed Oliver at their the defensive tackle. That's that's your rush package package right there. Yeah, that's your NASCAR package. It's the package that we were looking for, and I think that I think that that's what you were looking to do when you signed when you drafted Boogie Basham. Yep. Was that specific package right there? A guy that go inside outside. I don't think the Bills ever had intentions of moving Greg Rousseau to inside. And then last year they did it and they saw how well it worked. And mind you, you forget when he was at the University of Miami, a good portion of his sacks came from the inside as well yep. there. So I think that now they saw that it's an eye opener. It's okay, how can we make this pass rush even better? That's gonna be a that's gonna be a that's gonna be a terror. And 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 nothing against when you look at this division, the Patriots line ain't dominant. Mac Jones can't Mac Jones can move a little bit, but he can't move like that. I don't care how dominant you are. Those are some dudes up there. Yeah. Do they play their potential? That's a problem. Yeah. Then you talk about Tua. You have a guy with concussion problem. Miami still ain't fixed that offensive line the way it should be. That's a problem. You know how you stop Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill? You don't let them get going because you get to the quarterback. Yep. And now you have Aaron Rodgers in New York. It's the guy with, how old is Aaron? 38? 39? 39. 40. 30, 39? Aaron ain't moving like Aaron used to move. Guess what? You got three. And how you beat Aaron Rodgers and those guys? You get to him. It's always been the key. Get to him. So I think that with adding Leonard Floyd, the Bills went a different route of trying to match the moves of a New England who we they haven't made too many moves yet. Obviously, they brought back some of their incumbent guys. And you, we're, we're waiting to see if they add in DeAndre Hopkins. But even if they add in DeAndre Hopkins, even if you add in a Dalvin Cook there, both of those guys, you went a different way of negating him. Okay? You're going away to, hey, we're just not going to let you get going. We're going to put guys out there that's going to get to you in three seconds. Not four, but three seconds. So, in the day, I, I think that the expectations for Floyd, I, I don't, depending on the snap counts, I can see him getting 10 sacks. You give me eight with a snap count percentage of 60%, I'm good with it. Yeah. I'm good with it. And like I said, my man, uh, Stevie, says, are we counting on Shane Ray? We just going to talk about that. You know I'm high on him. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to get from Shane Ray, but I, I can tell you what. It's a hell of a signing. It's a, it's another first round guy. Once again, who did he play with? Von Miller. Another Von Miller impact on this roster coming to fruition. I, but I think he may be a guy that we can stash in a practice squad because I don't think he wants to go back to the CFL either. I think he just wants to stay in the league and that's the practice NFL practice squad. He's fine with that. So I don't know, man. It's 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 gonna it's gonna be interesting. Kyle Yeager asks, uh, has Floyd played standing before? What about four down linemen with flip with Floyd is the blitzing missile from anywhere? Man. Um yeah, he's pl- he's played with his he's play- yeah, yeah, he, he played has, but I don't around. see him doing that. No. Because the the Bills gonna run three, they're gonna run uh two linebackers only. Yeah. So no, you're gonna you're gonna probably gonna see you're gonna see him over tackle, Vaughn over tackle, Greg Rousseau over guard, and Ed Oliver over guard. So, man, that's a lot of athleticism. Those guys will track you down. And even when you talk about a pass rush, you're talking about people who can blow up screen plays as well. A lot of experience and knowledge in that line. Like I said, this is not Mario Addison being past his prime and us trying to get that third, that second or third rusher. So, But that brings us to the final topic of the night. Obviously, with Leonard Floyd joining this roster, it obviously puts somebody on the roster bubble. Three names that come to mind. First and foremost, obviously, veteran Shaq Lawson. Uh, fourth year guy AJ Epinesa, and third year guy Boogie Basham. So I got to come to you, James. Which one of these guys, if any, do you think has the most to prove and would be considered to be on the roster bubble already, the most? If it's me, it's AJ Epineza. Um, I think with him, mm-hmm. you could probably get some type of trade. Some, you're not going to resign him. Let's get that out of the way. You're probably not going to resign him. So if that's the case, get something for him. You can maybe trade him, get a six-round pick. 
Um, because I just don't see him making this roster. Um, we named a big three in regards to the defensive ends, Greg Rousseau, Bob Miller, and Leonard Floyd. I don't think you let Boogie Basham go because he has a cheap deal, not just this year, next year as well. So I think that's your four, right? And then Shaq Lawson, probably a swing guy, where you like, uh, are you active today or not? I think that's it. Um, I just don't think AJ makes the cut. And Shane Ray is going to be your practice squad guy. All right. I like Shane Ray as the practicing guy, and actually, I can be honest with you. If Shane Ray comes out and plays, Shane Ray may be on the active roster, and you could honestly see two of these guys yeah. not on this roster. I don't know if Shaq Lawson's at the point in his career where he has the pride, or he he doesn't. Where he, he I don't know if he's at the point where he doesn't have too much pride, where he could sit in the practice squad and be okay with it. We've seen the situations in New York. We've seen the situations in Texas, Houston. He's not necessarily just a guy that is going to buy in just to buy in. And I don't think he came back to Buffalo to just sit and not play. So that's going to be an interesting situation to see how they handle that. They, that could be a guy that may ask for his release, if possible. We've seen it before, especially with veterans. Yeah. Um, I don't think he – I thought he – I think he thought he was going to get more traction in open market than he, get, he did as well this offseason. So he ended up coming back on a cheap deal. And he wasn't half bad. He wouldn't play bad last year. He actually no. pulled us out in some, some situations, especially if the bottom went down. He did. He did. AJ Epinesa, I'm I'm with you on the agreement that he he's the one who has the most value. If AJ puts up the same numbers he had last year and gets six sacks against six and a half sacks, you're not going to resign him. You can't. You can't afford him. He's a pass rusher on the open market. He's gonna get. He's gonna command probably. At least ten million dollars per season on the open market, because he's a guy who's not half bad against the run, half bad against the run either. Then you bring me to Boogie Basham. Out of these three guys, Boogie has obviously Shaq's getting towards the end of his career, I would say, and I, I don't think his career is going to be extended as long as it could be. Boogie has the most potential. Out of all three guys. And I think the Bills knew that when they drafted him. I thought they think that the Bills thought that he could unseat, and we talked about this last year, that Boogie Basham with his his skill set and his talent could possibly unseat AJ Epinesa last season for that second spot. And if he didn't unseat him for the second spot, we thought that where we're placing Leonard Floyd now is where Boogie Basham was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So now that we've brought Leonard Floyd into this spot, I think it, I actually think it puts more of a spotlight on Boogie Basham right now. Because I also do believe he does have trade value. And his trade value would actually be cheaper than A.J. Epinesa. And overall, I think he's just a more talented football player than A.J. I think A.J.'s consistent. I think we've said before, when we talk about A.J. Epinesa and... His skill set, he reminds me of Chris Kelsey, or Chris Kelsey, or Ryan Denny. If you want to look at the Bills history, he's yeah. a solid guy. He's going to get you six and a half, seven sacks. He's going to be solid against the run. He'll probably be healthy most of the time, but he's not going to give you too many wild plays. We've seen Boogie make a couple wild plays, but it hasn't, but it hasn't been consistent enough, and. Where that consistency, that inconsistency falls, I don't know if it falls on Boogie or it falls on the Bills. Because the Bills changed him up when he first came in, just like they did AJ. You pretty much redshirted him his year, his first year, dropped him down from 290 to 270, and tried to build him back up to 275. Now, if that was the right move or the wrong move, I don't know. But I do know one thing. When you took him to 270, you no longer could play him at the defensive tackle spot. Yeah. So I actually think that the spotlight's gonna be more on Boogie. I think he's gonna be one more in jeopardy um, because he has trade value. Well, we gonna see shortly. We gonna see shortly. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. So I don't know, man. It like I said, this is honestly the most talented pass rush we've had in Buffalo in McDermott and Sean Bean era. I mean McDermott and uh, Brandon Bean era. No question about it. 
And we even have to talk about you. You talk about John Shane Ray too. Don't forget about uh, Jonathan Kingsley. Yeah, another guy who didn't show a lot in the regular season when he played, but God, during camp and preseason last season, he got regular season snaps. That matters. It matters absolutely. So, man, it, 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 it's it's a good problem to have. Okay, and like Brandon Bean said a couple, I think last week, it's gonna be some tough, tough, tough roster moves this offseason. So it's gonna be interesting, and uh, somebody somebody's gonna bring us some trade value and draft capital. We got a lot of draft capital heading the next year, and if he gets more, you never know. They may be planning to win the Super Bowl and then dra- and then trade up in the draft and get an impact player immediately. They are not shy. It will be aggressive. Like I said, we talked about it earlier, but man, other than that, man, I, I ain't got nothing else. You got a, uh, you got anything about this defensive line? Anything about Brandon Bean, Sean McDermott? It's gonna be an inter- uh, interesting battle. So I'm, I'm excited to see it. Um, y'all know we're gonna talk about this camp approach, and we'll be talking about it through camp. So y'all do not want to miss that because we got some more things. We're gonna be talking about that the D tackles as well. We're gonna be like, like I always say about JT. We're gonna be talking that talk. Yeah, I, I think, like I said, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. I don't know if I put it everywhere, but I did. I think I put our new YouTube page. Um, actually, I'll put it up there now for you guys to see. But this is where we're going to be doing most of our live shows this season. So I'll put it in the chat now so you guys can get it. So please like and subscribe to this. Let me see if I can put it in the comments here for you guys. Um, There's nothing personal, just the full YouTube page. So yeah, just subscribe to that if possible if you guys can. And uh we're gonna have we're gonna be doing a lot of things different. Like I said, we're we're rebranding. Um oh yeah, uh John Roberts says before we get off, uh Boogie Boogie came on camp more rest more uh, more muscular, vines impressed by him. And also shout out to the Bills medical staff who are actually getting an an SP this year. So um Definitely, uh, grass will get them a round of applause. You know, so uh, congratulations to those guys over there. They did a hell of a job. They're getting all the praise in the world, and I think that they got medical staff across the country raises. <laughs> so a lot of people need to be thanking them for their, their quick work with uh, DeMar Hamlin last year. And, uh, yeah, man, a lot of things going on. We re- uh, rebranded some things, so you'll be seeing some things do different with the show, and we'll probably get you more content. Some content, I think I told you a couple weeks ago, will still be live, but I think we're going to do some recorded content there because there's so much that we want to talk about. We just can't do it in a 45-minute show, and we also don't want to stay on here and have you guys captivated for two hours or can't held with hostage for two hours. So we're going to start to find ways to give you guys more content. We will be seeing um, – thanks, John, for sharing. Um, thank you for tuning in, Kyle and, and um, Stevie, Jill. We're going to be uh, sh- sharing more content in, a, in different ways. And you'll start seeing our Instagram page. So there's a lot of things we got to do over the next couple weeks. So just stay tuned. And other than that, guys, as always, thank you for tuning in. You can catch us on uh, YouTube. You can catch us on Facebook. And we are on Spotify. You usually catch the audio up the next day after the show's recorded. Other than that, James, you got anything, anything else? Nope. Man, listen. We got some things coming, y'all. So don't sleep on it. Be on it. So it's going don't down. Sleep on it. Be on it. I like that. I like that shirt. But yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. As always, thank you for tuning in. And go Bills. Peace.